warm welcome to Talking Stocks. I'm Kukule Tukzele. In studio with me this week, I'm joined by Brian Rudd and Sean Ashton, both from Anchor Capital. Now today we're talking PNC Financial Services Group. To put it into perspective, PNC is an American financial services corporation and as of December 2014, they had assets of approximately $345 billion. Now their operations include a regional banking franchise operating primarily in 19 states and the District of Columbia, with more than 2,700 branches, online and mobile services, together with 8,000 ATMs, specialized financial businesses serving companies and government entities and asset management and processing businesses. So, gentlemen, good to have you with us today. Clearly, this is a huge company, a juggernaut of a financial services group, but let's talk about the scale and uh, uh, the access that it has to uh, both corporates as well as consumers. So a very large business, as you've, as you've mentioned, about a $45 billion market cap as well. And I think what makes this group uh, unique and what probably attracted us to us in the first place is the fact that it was one of the fewer banks in America which didn't have much investment banking exposure. Yeah. So if you wanted exposure to uh, a long-term theme of rising net interest margins, which has been the opposite of what we've seen in recent years, uh, this is a good way to play that. So it's really retail banking, about 20% of their business in terms of profits, about 50% coming from corporate and institutional banking, so banking to, to big companies. Um, and then the remainder really an asset management franchise in the form of their, their own business and a 25% stake in, in BlackRock. Mm -hmm. So quite a nice mix of earnings. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that relationship with BlackRock. Uh, that uh, caught my attention. Well, that's the thing is, you know, this is a, probably a bank that a lot of people haven't heard of, regardless of their size. They're not a, a JP Morgan or a Morgan standing there. But they do have this little business on the side called BlackRock. And BlackRock is the biggest asset management business in the world. They look after about $4.1 trillion. Um, and that's pretty much evenly or is split between their own business, then they've got the iShares, which is a tracking business, and then also indexes. So really nice business. Um, asset management has the great ability to generate fee income. And that in turn then runs through back into PNC which gets probably about, I think it's just shy of 12% of their um, net income from BlackRock and this fee income. Let's go back to the overall theme then of PNC and maybe walk through the matrix. You mentioned the market cap, which is quite substantial, mm -hmm. but looking at other, some of the other numbers, the price to earnings uh, ratio, I see 12.9 uh, uh, times. Yeah, it's sitting at a, a currently at about a 13 times multiple with a forward 11.1. Uh, um, so reasonably attractively priced on a, at an earnings, uh, price earnings multiple. But then our key is on a price to book. You know, we're looking at a 1.1 multiple here, which makes this uh, exceptionally attractively priced. And through time, this is actually one of its more attractively priced positions at the moment. So you're getting a, I wouldn't say a great return on equity, but not bad compared to some of its peers. Uh, and then a very, uh, a, literally a peer comparative return on assets as well. Mm. For those who have more of a South African uh, view on return on equity, we used to double digits there. So when mm. I saw eight as well, I was slightly concerned. But does it does is Google, it this very, validated? It, it's in the it's US? very low, and I think yeah. the I think you've got to be betting that it improves. I think that's uh, you know, and there's going to be a number of reasons why that will happen. I think the first point is that these businesses are far less risky than they've been certainly pre-financial crisis. So gearing levels have come down dramatically. A lot, a lot of that's regulation driven. Mm. And if you look at their gearing, it's now sitting at about eight, eight times their core tier one capital ratio is about 10%, which is very high. Um, and that gearing of eight times has come down from you know, 10 to 15 times when you look back uh, 10 years ago. So regulation has driven gearing down. And if you're getting the same return on assets, the inability to gear like you used to has obviously pushed return on equity down. Mm. The second contributing factor has been the fact that net interest margins have been squeezed significantly as a result of falling long-term bond yields. Yeah. It's something we've spoken about with JP Morgan and it applies equally here. And I think the thesis for owning these stocks now is to say you've got a very low earnings base and as measured by an 8% return on equity uh, that has arisen uh, largely out of the fact that net interest margins have come down a lot from, in the case of PNC, from 4% more recently to about 27 now. So well below, well below 3%. And what we need to see now is Janet Yellen raising interest rates. Mm. And if she does so, the long end of the bond curve should rise significantly. These guys tend to price their loans on the long end of the bond curve, which is the 10-year you know, type of treasury. Um, and that should result in this long-term theme or long-dated theme of falling net interest margins reversing. Mm. And that in turn will, will raise their, their return on equity and their profits. 
uh, and if you're buying it at close to book value or close uh, and at a 10 or 11 times forward PE, um, that should be a good result. But it, we must be clear about the, w what the risk is, is that if we're in a deflationary environment globally, these types of assets won't do well. But our, our call is that ultimately interest rates will rise. Mm. Yeah. In the meantime, it also seems as though they have uh, strict and tight measures when it comes to their loans and the delinquencies uh, yes. they of. No, very much so. They, they really have decided to, to put themselves and write better quality loans. Um, there's been increased competition coming through, specifically in like the auto um, loan environment, where PNC has actually pulled back. They would rather write quality loans than just sit with the market position. So that has enabled them to bring their delinquencies down, their um, non-performing loans have come down. So they really have been um, very conscious on what they're doing and how they're doing it. Mm. Coming back to that net income split, uh, Sean, you did allude to the fact that uh, strong focus on corporate institutional banking, retail mm. as well, BlackRock also coming through. But uh, the asset management group, we well, clearly wouldn't be buying this for. It's for reasonably fund. small in the mix. I mean, mm. outside of the BlackRock uh, holding, it's it's probably four or five percent of earnings. So I think that's not something to focus on too heavily. To my mind, what's going to drive this business going forward is an improvement in the U.S. economy. Um, coupled with the, the recognition from the Federal Reserve that actually they can raise interest rates and actually the world can absorb that. And I think the US economy is ready for that. And I think the reason that uh, rates haven't risen is more out of concern from the Fed as to what's happening outside of America yeah. rather than what's happening in America in terms of financial market conditions uh, and economic conditions in emerging markets, principally China. So I think if we see some stabilization there, um, and, and, and I think the, the Fed has got the, le the message loud and clear from markets that markets want to see higher interest rates. In other words, if you look at the, the most recent meeting where they chose not to raise rates, you know, a lot of shares sold off and markets sold off. So the markets are saying, you know what, guys, we actually need interest rates to rise now. Mm -hmm. And that would be very good for financials in general and good for a bank like PNC. Mm. Yeah. Walk us through that theme again, especially if we take a look at the long-term metrics. Naturally, 2008, 2009 with the financial crisis, we did see a dip uh, in the company's performance. But I understand long-term, it seems as though things are picking up if you look at the overall trend on the graph. Yeah, so I think uh, long-term, it's actually been the other direction because you've had bond yields that have come down dramatically from probably 5% down to 2%. At the same time, their, their net interest margins have come down from about four or north of four to less than three percent so you would expect a correlation along those lines and in turn return on equity is also fallen it used to be at about 15 percent it's now eight um, in the financial crisis it was much lower but that was more a case of write-offs that they would have had to have taken at the time rather than what the net interest margin was at that point in time so uh, what, if you look at the earnings base currently return on equity is below where we think it should be um, but that's not a function of uh, bad debt, bad debt losses, because actually the credit loss ratio is quite low. So their 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 debts and their or well their debtors and their debtors book is performing very well. Um, but it's it's really this issue that they need to see higher interest rates so mm. that they can reprice their loans. And what you're seeing coming through now is a lot more focus on costs, because obviously it's taking longer for that to happen, and that we've all expected rates to rise, and it's just been deferred and pushed out and pushed out. And now what all of these banks are having to do is to say, well, you know, if, if we're in a position this time next year where rates haven't risen, we, we have to have less costs. Exactly. So there's a big focus on efficiency, cutting heads. And, and what we hope to see is that that doesn't get become too deep in the sense that if you cut headcount too, too heavily and then the cycle does turn, you, you might be in a position where you don't have the ability to actually take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important to watch that dynamic around costs. And mm -hmm. I think they're doing the right things to preserve the income statement now, but it mustn't go too deep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's one of the things they're actually looking at at the moment is they've just escalated their cost um, saving program from around $100 million up to $500 million. So this is becoming a, a sizable contribution or a sizable thing to management is to control these costs. And that. Also looking at further risks, as you mentioned, the valuation of the BlackRock uh, 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 stake also comes in as a question here. Uh, why are we concerned about that one? Well, it's one of those that you go and look from <coughs> literally 12% of your revenue comes from this business. You own 25% of it. It is contributing to your income statement and your earnings line. If this decides to come down and BlackRock isn't able to generate the returns it was, it's going to impact your earnings. Um, so it's, it's a valuation and a, a requirement there is to say, okay, right, how much is this group worth? Because obviously from a market cap perspective, you're going to look at the, the stake and its investments that it holds within BlackRock. But also from an earnings perspective, it's going to come through that should BlackRock not deliver the returns it has been, mm. your earnings are going to come off. So there's, there's two folds that BlackRock comes in here. 
Just before we get into buy, hold and sell, the competitive landscape, are they managing to win market share of late and uh, uh, especially when it comes to the corporate and the uh, banking side? Because I think the banking market in the U.S. is quite saturated. Mm. It's, it's a very competitive environment. Um, PNC is actually very well positioned. They're a very stable business. They've got quite a good management structure in place. And they're, they're, they're a quality there. So they're actually very conservative in what they're doing. As I mentioned earlier, they're going after the quality business. Um, rather let someone else write the, the rubbish and keep the numbers <laughs> in check. Mm -hmm. So I think they, they really position themselves very well. Um, and they are winning the business. They are getting a lot of market share. They're also expanding a little bit through acquisition. They bought uh, Nat City as well as uh, Royal Bank of Canada's um, banking franchises. So they're expanding through um, acquisition as well. So I think they they seem to be winning at the moment. Um, but again, as, as I say, as Sean's alluded to in that, this really comes through that there's a lot of things they can do, but we do need these rates to start kicking. We do need that interest margin to increase. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get the uh, uh, view from our experts now whether or not to buy, hold or sell the stock. Sean, let's start with you. Buy, hold or sell PNC? I think it's a buy. I think you've got a low, a low starting base from a valuation point of view, and you've got a very, and, and underneath that you've got a very low earnings base. So if earnings kick up, you might get the double whammy of a, of a revaluation of the price to book multiple and the PE together with an improvement in, in ROE, which would obviously provide quite nice performance. But I do have to say that a lot of that call is predicated on, on, on a macro call around where rates go in the US, mm -hmm. and I, I will reserve the right to change my mind <laughs> if, if we start to think that actually the Federal Reserve can't sustainably increase interest rates. So it's key to see how, they, how the Fed behaves over the next number of months. They've said they will raise rates uh, this year, so they've committed to that. Well, when I say they've committed to it, they've said that's likely to happen this year, uh, despite the fact that they're, 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 they didn't move at the previous meeting, but time will tell. Mm. Um, and, and that's really going to be the single biggest determinant, I believe, of how this bank performs from here on out. So, Brian, you agree? 100%. Um, you know, we're seeing the, the Fed making noise of an increase. We want to see that increase come through now. It's quite a, a, a nice opportunity to buy. The share price did come back after the last set of results a little bit. So that does give a, an investor an opportunity to get in. And the company itself is thinking their shares are too cheap. They've just got a buyback program that they've just put it, brought in, buying 1.2% back of um, shares in issue last quarter. So I do think it's a buy. But as Sean rightly points out, we need to see how the Fed moves and whether there's a sustained increase in the interest rates and how long it takes for that process to go through. Mm -hmm. The share price, which was uh, just close to $100 uh, each, uh, now no, at 89 so? 89 yeah. 90 thereabouts, yeah. So not a bad deal. Mm. Okay, well, we'll leave it there for this week when it comes to PNC, a buy recommendation, but still uh, several uh, factors that could continue to influence the view on this particular share, like the rising of interest rates in the US. But a big thank you to my guests, Brian Rudd and Sean Ashton, both from Anchor Capital. Do be sure to catch us next time where we talk more stocks. For the latest fundamental and technical analysis delivered right to your inbox, log on to talkingstocks.co.za and sign up for the Talking Stocks newsletter.